We are just one week from the Detroit mayoral debate with candidates Vinnie Napoleon and Mike Duggan here at Broadcast House. We met with Vinnie Napoleon last night. And tonight, candidate Mike Duggan joins us with his vision for Detroit. And just like our candidate last night, you have five minutes to do so. So thank you very much for coming in. How's the campaign treating you? Uh, well, it's been uh, long days, but yesterday I had my 241st house party, which Ken Cockrell uh, hosted for me with about 100 people. And it's uh, just been one day after another meeting people and... Uh, uh, covering ground. So Detroit is just being able to ask you questions and everything about the future. You know that's been the whole campaign is just to be as accessible as I can so that anybody feels like they can come up and talk to me and it seems to be working. So let me ask you this. Um, y you know there have been so many issues with emergency manager Kevin Orr. Dave Bing has said publicly that he hasn't been getting along with him. How are you going to deal with Kevin Orr, bankruptcy, and, and just getting along with Kevin Orr? Well, you got two different questions. Obviously, uh, it's going to be my goal to convince the governor that if I'm elected, we've got a mayor with a strong turnaround history who's going to bring in a first-class team, and I'd like to shorten Kevin Orr's stay uh, to the, uh, you know, get him out as quickly as possible. In the interim, the question is, who runs the city? Uh, and, and Mayor Bing has been complaining he hasn't been allowed to, but certainly at a minimum, I would expect to be the chief operating officer, be able to start bringing up the cabinet immediately and start to change the services because uh, I, it's very hard to make a case that the city services have gotten any better since Kevin Orr has been the emergency manager. I think most Detroiters would feel things haven't changed. A lot was made yesterday about this list of the candidates for emergency manager. A court decided to go ahead and release them, although there's a stay on that right now. Is your name on that list? It's not on that list. I hope they release them right away, uh, but I've said this over and over. The, the Snyder administration approached me two years ago. They said the city was going in the tank financially and in the future they might have to look at a consent agreement or an emergency manager. And if they did, would I be interested in being the emergency manager? And I told them flatly I would not, that I did not think the governor had any right to pick the leader of the city of Detroit, that that was reserved uh, to the voters. And the emails that have been released showed I was lobbying against the emergency manager every step of the way. I was not a candidate and I hope they release him soon because my name is not in there. Okay, so you didn't want to be emergency manager. Let's talk a little bit about uh, bankruptcy. Kevin Orr said right here on our set, he told Stephen and I, um, that if Detroit doesn't go through with bankruptcy, the city of Detroit would actually no. die. There's no Just, plan B. Yeah. What do you say to that? I say that when I was hired into the Detroit Medical Center in 2004 and DMC had lost $500 million in five years, the DMC board had already hired bankruptcy attorneys. They'd run up a million dollars in legal bills and everybody said to me there wasn't an alternative. I got the unions in. I got the creditors in. I got everybody to strike a deal and then we turned the system around and we brought it back without bankruptcy. And I would have liked to have been given that chance because I think I could have done it at the city of Detroit. But at this point, that's hindsight. The, the die's been cast unless uh, the judge rules. Uh, the Detroit is not eligible. And in Are that you case, hoping that to be the case? You know, I, I would like it to be the case, and, and then I hope I get a chance to, to turn the city around without bankruptcy, uh, but I'll deal with whichever outcome there is. I started my career many years ago as a bankruptcy attorney. I'm comfortable uh, in dealing with those issues if that's where we are, but I would prefer to bring the city back without it. You're kind of being considered the, the business candidate out of the race of, uh, of two, uh, and therefore you're getting a lot of endorsement from some of Detroit's really big business, uh, the money. a lot. You've got a pretty good war chest going on. Who's this donating to your campaign? And, yeah, and who are you going to be holding to after stuff? I, I want to take issue with the business candidate. I am endorsed by the Detroit firefighters, by the Detroit sanitation workers, by the EMS workers, by the plumbers, by the SEIU health care workers, by the laborers. I've got a huge number of union supporters. I have community groups like Ernie Johnson behind me. What I have done is built a campaign of a broad coalition of all Detroiters, and I am going to be beholden to the voters of the city of Detroit. Talk about transparency a little bit. We've had so many issues with it. Uh, Kwame Kilpatrick had a secret fund. Some people have questioned uh, Governor Snyder's nerd fund. Uh, Robert Facano had an issue with the fund. Do you think there should be any um, secret funds? We, we know about yeah. your PAC money, but I mean, should politicians come forward and tell the public where they're getting money? Absolutely. And you notice in this campaign, I did not create one of those funds. I had advisors telling me, let's create these secret funds where you won't know there are donors. I said, absolutely not. I'm not going to participate in that. I think it erodes kind confidence in government, uh, and I will have no part of a secret fund when I'm elected. Your, your uh, opponent makes a big deal about constantly saying, I am from Detroit, I grew up here, I lived here, and so forth, and, and obviously kind of a shot at you, painting you as the outsider who came to Detroit. 
Well, obviously the voters don't agree with him, and of course I am a native Detroiter. I was born in the city as a young boy. I lived on Stansbury near Franklin Schaefer, went to high school in the city, and I've worked in the city every day for the last 32 years in a lot of roles. And I think, as you saw by the results on, on a primary night when 48,000 people wrote my name in and filled in the circle, people have said, consider me a Detroiter, and I certainly consider myself a Detroiter. I, I've heard you say it doesn't matter who's the mayor of the city of Detroit. It doesn't matter if you're black, brown, white. Everyone should be well. I've heard comments on both sides, but what are you hearing in your ear from citizens of Detroit, especially people in the neighborhoods? Uh, well, there's no doubt about it. The people in this community are ready for change, and the politics of racial divisiveness, the vast majority of the city is fed up with, and I could feel that before I declared. A lot of people thought I was going to have trouble, and you've seen uh, that I could go with you any neighborhood in the city, and you'd see the way I'm received, and of course, I carry 94% of the precincts in the city in the primary. That's a pretty strong statement that Detroiters want change. You've got about 30 seconds here. Can you make your pitch? Uh, you know, I just want to say thank you to the 241 people who've hosted me in your homes, to the 20,000 people who have come to the house parties, to the 48,000 people who wrote my name in in the primary. Uh, and uh, the election's a week from Tuesday. And if uh, you'll give me your support this November, I will work just as hard the next four years to help bring the city back. Well, we certainly appreciate you coming in and giving us your time and your five minutes to speak your case. Thank you for having me. All right. As we mentioned, the stage is now set for the Detroit mayoral debate right here on 7. Both candidates, Benny Napoleon and Mike Duggan, will meet here on October 29th, right here at 7, only on 7, and that will be the last debate before you can cast your vote. So good time to listen up.